Hi everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. This old fortune is really putting up a fight. So yesterday, out on our maiden voyage, um, on the way back, it the engine crapped out and would never start again. I I originally thought it, it had gotten flooded out because the the the, the power needle was screwed out uh, quite a bit and it was running really rich. I, I thought it had fouled itself up, but. Uh, that was not the case. I got it all dried out and it just, it just wouldn't start. Uh, we were checking around for spark and they seem to be, um, uh, random at, at best. So, um, we're back looking at this magneto as a possible source of trouble. Um, I did check for fuel flow. There's tons of fuel flow. The, the carburetor seems okay. Um, I mean, this thing, I was putting ether down the carburetor and it, and it wouldn't light up. So I think we've got ignition troubles. So we're going to have a look at that. The first thing I want to do is bar it over to top dead center and, and see where the heck the rotor's pointing. But I have to show you something before we do that. This is how you shut off a tractor with a magneto. This here grounds out the ignition. Now you have to hold that until the engine completely stops. So what we have to do is we have to use a jumper wire to make sure that stays closed like that because you're barring this thing over, it could start. And number one, you get a bar in the face or get run over by your own tractor. Both scenarios, not too good. There we go. Now, no matter what, she won't start. Just verifying that it's timed correctly as per the manual, and it is. What I'm going to do now is, even though I hate what it looks like, I'm going to try cobbling the distributor back onto this thing and uh, see if we can get it running that way. At least then I can know either there's something wrong with the mag or something not wrong with the mag. Well, that might give us a clue, mightn't it? I pulled the magneto out and found part of the impulse drive um, discombobulated and hanging out like that. That's not good. That would explain our issue. So uh, we're pretty much heading for the distributor now. Due to the gear arrangement in this engine, the magneto is actually driven at crankshaft speed, not camshaft speed, which is half crankshaft speed, which is what you want to run a distributor at. So how they make up for it is they only have two lobes on the cam and they've got a, a two to one gear reduction on the rotor arm. And that makes it the, the rotor turns at camshaft speed, which makes this happy. So uh, what we did when we put the distributor on this the first time, lucky for us in our junk, we found this. This is an old Craftsman 2 to 1 or 1 to 2 gearbox for an electric drill. So what we did originally was... Um, We had this in there, and it engaged the drive coupling, and that drove our distributor like that. Problem being is getting stuff like this perfectly straight without access to a machine shop is pretty difficult. So what I've come up with is, in its new incarnation, I'm going to do it like this. I've got a 9 16 and a half inch socket welded together because there's a, a 5 16 nut that holds the, the drive dog for this disc onto the engine. And lucky the way it turns, it won't loosen it, so we're good. So we're gonna put that in there as a drive coupling and drive that so it'll be a lot more stable. Anyway, let's see if we can get this mounted on the engine. I'm gonna connect these two old sockets, a uh, half inch and a 5 eighths, um, back to back with a piece of 3 eighths square rod and that'll make us an even shorter drive coupling that'll allow this to get even closer into that housing and buy us a little more room for the distributor. So here's our drive coupling together. Went pretty well. I'm gonna put it in here, get it engaged, and see where it sits. Yep, that's good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the distributor attached to it, and we'll put it in there and see what it looks like. And let's try this thing in here. The distributor we're using is a Delco distributor from an American-built Ferguson TO20 with a Continental engine. It, uh, it turns the right way, so the advance uh, actually advances. If you get one 
that turns the wrong way, it'll actually retard the timing as it speeds up, and that's that's bad. So let's get her in here. Okay, so that's about where it'll sit. Not too bad at all. So we're gonna make one bracket to hold our, our gearbox here, and then I'm gonna make another bracket. I'm gonna weld it to the to the lifter cover in here that'll hold the distributor solid by this clamp, and then we should be good to go. We've got our bracket fashioned, and I'm, I'm quite sure this will not be the last revision of the bracket. It's working on angles and stuff. I'm okay measuring on, on, on right angles, but once I start having to measure stuff like this, I, I get lost easy. Anyway, how we're going to attach this to the tractor is this drill gearbox had a carriage bolt through it as a means of attaching a D-handle to it. So that's what we're going to do. I've taken that carriage bolt out and replaced it with a little bit longer one. I made the hole oversized so I've got a little wiggle room. Originally this was held on there with, um, I think we had a muffler clamp or something holding it on. But anyhow, let's see. Now, what we can do is we can actually check on the bench here um, to get the height. We can compare it to the height of the center of the magneto and get this pretty close. And you can see there, I'd say we're a tiny bit high. So there. Now, it all depends on if it's level also, but I think we might be okay right about there. All right. Let's go put it on the tractor and see what it looks like. Okay. So we'll go. We'll get that engaged and we've got room here to drop um, a bolt through there. So here's our first mock-up. We've got the distributor mounted to the gearbox and it's I've got clearance to the exhaust manifold so the distributor is not going to get cooked. Now I just need to make my brackets back to the back to the timing cover to hold it. So we've got our upper bracket made, and it's gonna. I have to remove the bolt cover, the valve cover. I've marked it already, and we'll bolt this to there. We've got our distributor bracket attached to the valve cover, and we're gonna get that up. Well, look at that, beautiful. All right. So it says here this thing should all go together now. There we go. Now all I have to do is lower the lower the timing clamp down. Oh, I don't think it lowers down. I think it's uh, that's where it belongs. Okay, we'll come up with a couple of little tubes to put in there. It'll be just fine. So we have now got the basic uh, construction done. It, it's on there. It it's good. It turns the right way and it's and it's relatively solid. Um, it's got just kind of enough jiggle to it in case something's not exactly perfectly straight. I have to come up with some way of sealing um, around here because that's a direct path into the gear train and, and the oil. So I'm going to look around at my junk and see what I've got that I can make some sort of a seal for there. Here's our seal for this end. Um, I made it out of one of these. It's the, the bellows off uh, a strut or a shock or a damper on a car. So that's that problem solved. Now, the next thing I'm going to deal with is I want to open this thing up, make sure it's well lubricated, and I'm going to put a grease fitting in it. So we're opening this thing up to see what's inside it. I think I've already been inside here once, and I, and I packed it full of grease, but... Um, I'd rather have a grease fitting on it. That way I know I can keep it packed with grease because there's not really much in the way of bearings in here, if I recall. So let's open this thing up and see what's in there. Yeah, so I did put a little grease on it, but you can see there's no real bearings. It's just metal running on plastic. But that, you can see our gear reduction there. Look at it. That way is, is two to one. 
and this way is one to two. Pretty cool. So anyway, I'm going to um, find a safe place to drill a hole in this thing, probably right around here somewhere, and we'll put a grease fitting in it. Now we can get this thing packed full of grease. Okay, next up I got to do is I just want to sit this on here, and I have to get this distributor timed because when everything screws in, I want it as close to, as I can. That is number one over there. So we're gonna see here, we're gonna get it um, screwed in and see where it lands and we, and we can change the position of that to get it just right. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is put a mark on here and a mark there. So I know when I put it together, if that lines up there, our distributor's gonna end up timed at number one. Now we're gonna have a look at the distributor. Make sure the points are, are good in it. I think I went over this one before when I was um, mucking around with this when it first came here. Yeah, the points are clean. The gap seems okay. So I think we're good here. We'll just put her in. So now we're gonna put this thing together for keeps. All right, so now we're gonna put it together and see if we can make it run. I'll still take it apart one more time to get everything painted and whatnot once we're done. But for now, uh, we've got the mechanical part of it good enough so that we can try and fire this machine up. There it is, all together how it'll look when it's on there running. And it looks, I've tried to make it look like it belongs there. And it honestly isn't too bad. Now we have to mount the coil. All right, so I've got um, plug wires and a coil wire. This is all just cobbled up for now to see if it'll start. If it starts and I'm happy with how it is, then I'll make proper stuff for it. Last thing I gotta do is run a jumper wire up to the battery just to get it to come to life. So far, so good. It started. Now I'm going to uh, clean this all up and make this look proper. We got our coil bracket made and the coils mounted. It's good and solid on there. We've got um, our secondary ignition wiring laid in there. And I've got this kind of sort of hooked up. Last thing I have to deal with is this governor rod. It's got to go around the distributor. So we're going to have a look at that right now. All right, here we go. Ignition on. All right, oh, make sure it's in neutral. Always important. All right, let's see what happens.
Oh, there she is, idling nicely. I haven't got my fingers around the back to adjust the idle mixture yet. The distributor wobbles a tiny bit when it's running, but that's not too bad. It should be okay. Um, so I'm quite happy with this. Now we can go ahead and start doing all the little finicky stuff to make it look good. I've got to weld that bracket and a couple of other little things. Get all the wiring straightened out, paint a few parts. Uh, I found from test driving it around, the governor is a little bit lazy. It needs some attention. We'll get on that. But aside from that, hey, I've been driving it around in the field. I'm pretty happy with it. So that was pretty good. Our Fortune is back up and running again. It's got a distributor now instead of a Magneto. And uh, I think it's Magneto days are behind it. This seems to be working pretty well, so we'll probably stick with that. Um, anyway, it was fun and I learned a lot along the way. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this. And uh, I guess we'll see you next time on the Claremont Classic Garage. Thanks for tuning in and so long.